Some time back I had made a video where I showed an unusual technique for finding a shorted component on a circuit board. What I had done was taken my free spray and I went ahead and froze the area where I thought it might have a shorted component and I applied power to the board and I watched which component defrosted the quickest. Well this is a technique that I've used from time to time. It hasn't always been 100% accurate. In fact sometimes it can be misleading because some components by the very nature give off a little bit of heat. Well I've often wondered about using a thermal imaging camera to do the same thing but I never wanted to spend the money for one and much to my delight one of my customers gave me one the other day and I wanted to show you what it's capable of doing. Now this particular camera is not a real high-end camera but it, it's good enough for uh, what I'm doing here. So what I did was I took some diodes here and I laid them out across this uh, little circuit here I made and I purposely short-circuited one of the diodes so when I applied a little current to the wire here through my power supply it'll show which diode is overheating because of the fact that it's got a short circuit across it. So if you take a look at it under the thermal imaging camera here I've got about one amp of current going to the uh, diode and I could actually get a signature to come off of it, a heat signature with less less than an amp. I could do it with a half amp and it seemed to work fairly well. Uh, the other thing I noticed about this particular camera though, it's got a target area on it, little, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, there are little icons that show up and if you don't get them lined up just right you don't get a very accurate reading as far as the temperature on this thing goes. Let's see if I can move that. See I just got it up to 92 there and if I move it off target, it quickly drops back down to 88 or whatever. Let me pull it down like that. You'll see what I mean. There, we're down to 76. So you got to get this lined up pretty good here if you're wanting to get a temperature reading. Anyway, got it up to 98 right there. So along this line, I begin to wonder about other possibilities, such as using a laser temperature probe. Let me go ahead and turn the light on here. So a lot of you have probably seen these by now. These have been around a while. These are... Uh, laser temperature probes. They're used in a lot of industries including uh, automotive industry and the whole idea is wherever this dot points it's supposed to give you a reading of the temperature. Well one of the things I've noticed is that these things aren't always that accurate as far as telling you the actual temperature or where the heat source is coming from and I'll give you an example with this one here. Here you'll notice if I point my laser pointer below the diode that's overheating I actually get a higher reading than when I move right on the diode. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong diode there. There we go. Here I'm right on the diode, for example. Now if I go below it, you notice the temperature just went up. So that could be a problem if you're trying to troubleshoot a circuit like this here and you're trying to find a, you know, a bunch of really small components where you've got surface mounted components and whatnot. And like I said, some components by their very nature are going to generate a little heat. So it's not going to be 100% accurate, but then again, these things are used in the industry to check overheating wires and houses, thermal leaks, um, mechanics use them to check uh, cylinders and see you know, if there's a uh, cylinder that tend to running a little hotter than one of the others. There's all kinds of great uses for something like this. Now one more thing before I end the video here, I was going to show you what else this thing does. When I take my freeze spray and I freeze a, uh, let me point it at the, uh, here we go, I'm going to go ahead and shoot a little free spray on the paper here, you're going to see something kind of cool here. It just changed the contrast here. Now the, the whole background is turned yellow and the, the cold source is showing up under the camera. In fact, I'll show you if I put my hand under there, you can see my hand is giving you a heat signature. So it's slowly warming up. It'll, it'll turn uh, to a different shade soon enough. And there we can still see the diode, the shorted diode that is right here, giving off a little signature. Anyway, for what it's worth, I thought that might be something worthy of making a video on. I'd be curious if any of you guys have uh, experimented with these thermal imaging cameras, if there's one you're particularly fond of. The model number, the one I'm using here, it's the uh, Perfect Prime IR0002. And uh, I think it retails for around four or five hundred bucks, something like that. I'm not entirely sure. If there's a better one out there, by all means, please leave it in the comment section. I think it would help a lot of other people that uh, might be interested in this sort of thing. 
Anyway, as always, I hope you enjoy the video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and spray this one more time, make it turn a different shade. Watch this. Look at that. Now the coldest spot is right, right there. Actually, no, that's that's the uh, what is that? Yeah, okay, the diode, the diode that's overheating a little bit is still showing up. There's my hand. Now look at the way this trails. Uh, the image, the heat image, tends to trail a little bit behind my actual hand here. And that was the other problem I found with this one. It seems to be working better now, but sometimes I notice that the the heat source would actually be below the diode or component that was overheating. Anyway, it's still a really cool thing to have. I'm not complaining. All right, good enough.